So I'd like to invite questions from the audience, but I would actually like to start by um, uh, with a question for each of you. And that is, um, so here we have assembled um, representatives of standards bodies, of uh, publishers, of technology organizations, and so on. For each of you, um, what would be uh, one thing that you would like to ask of the people here, um, either to do differently or to help you with, um, with the problems that you've identified, the challenges that you've identified? So what, what I would ask is, basically what we need is education. We need as many organizations and outlets, newspapers, news agencies, you know, everybody who's involved in this, we need to educate the, the, the general public on, on what copyright is and why our photographs have, um, have value and, and, and you know, why, the, why they are licensed. Um, I think part of that is, uh, would be a, a vast improvement in the, uh, uh, the bylining of photographers. Um, you know, I've argued for this for years in the UK and newspapers running uh, photographs, front page photographs with no byline. You know, if every photograph was bylined, and, and online as well, it can be done very small, but if every photograph was bylined, it would encourage the, the, the general public to understand that so, some person has created these photographs. And if we can, if we can, and the idea with Mark stays the same thing. I want people to start putting their names on photographs, and this, this is like a little bit of social engineering. I want people to start putting their names on photographs so they start to feel an ownership of their own product. And if they start to feel an ownership of their own product, maybe they'll be a little less likely to take somebody else's product product. So I would ask that there's more of an effort made to encourage people and, and to do that by bylining photographs wherever possible. Hello. Um, I think my presentation was about questions. So I'm going to ask a few more. <laughs> um, I, I see the pain. Uh, we feel the same pain as well. Uh, I think what's important for us to do, uh, and I, can, I should ask you as well to kind of think about it, is we need to build cases both top down and bottom up. So at the ground level, what is important? How does it affect photographers and other uh, people who are affected by this problem? How do we address those issues and how can we help them address those issues? And at the top, uh, what does it mean to businesses? How, how can businesses see a, a proper business case for that, see revenue or savings, etc.? So uh, I think we, we should work in both directions and ensure that there are problems that can be fixed because standards by themselves won't do anything unless they're actually addressing a certain problem and actually fixing that problem for somebody. Thank you. Well, I think I would have two, well, not suggestions. One for the technicians. I think it would be great to develop a system with which you could mark even smallest extracts of text and separately so that you can attach different rights to different extracts in a longer text. And then for the content providers, I would be very happy if they would you know, become more aware of really the value of their content and the, how important it is for the, the online system uh, to work and to maybe uh, be more aware of, of the risks out there and, and to have more a sense that the content providers sometimes uh, have to, I wouldn't say, stick together but defend their own interests and um, should not play a game that others impose on them which threatens their own whole industry. <clears throat> my, my question is simply how much are you inclined to put in effort uh, to put into uh, maintaining uh, rights relevant metadata that means as I outlined we are we know that it requires some action that metadata get into the photos or somewhere else it has to be written down it has to be recorded in some way so this has to be done and uh, are you also ready to be behind that this uh, continues to exist and does not disappear somewhere. And uh, that means also that you are ready to speak up and say, well, we don't like that uh, things I put in and uh, the ways I express rights, uh, that they simply disappear or are not recognized or are they put aside. There are many ways to go around rights expressions. 
I have a question to Mr. Hopner about this Google uh, thing. On your last slide, you made a number of uh, requirements uh, from the search engines. And since you were involved in the negotiations, both in France, you know, with Google and in Germany with the license, I would like to know what was the response of the, of the search engines on it? What did they say? Did they say they could do it or was it impossible? You will not be surprised that they would point out the apparent weaknesses of all those alternative technologies, starting with saying it doesn't comply with their own technology, it would only serve the interests of the content providers, but not the interest of the users. They, they are very quick in, in you know, pretending they are serving the whole world a big favor by defending uh, the system as it is and by, you know, uh, not accepting those alternative technologies because in any way they could uh, be detrimental to the end user. So they will say it's all too complicated, the system is complicated enough, it will only you know, need more capacity on our servers, it will need more capacity on your servers, the internet will be slower, the end consumer will have to wait longer for the results and uh, it's all not thought through properly, we haven't been involved uh, sufficiently in the process of developing it and um, from the outset we don't see any need, there's this great robot exclusion protocol, uh, why would we need to change it, it has been working for 20 years, uh, everyone is using it and it does a great job, so that are basically the original words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so here and then over there. Um, this is also for, for Thomas. Um, some of the things that you uh, mentioned there, um, I feel within the IPTC we have actually addressed and brought forward solutions for already. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was uh, that, for example, robots.txt would only protect or you know an entire page but could not be address addressing individual snippets, which is ever more relevant as pages turn into streams. Um, uh, the, the funny thing is that if you combine two IPTC standards, uh, specifically R News, which allows you to mark up uh, uh, publishing, you know, published information with RightsML to express your specific uh, rights snippets, you could do that in a way that is largely actually acknowledged to be interoperable with uh, what search engines do. I was just wondering if that was ever part of the wider conversation with them or if uh, R News or schema.org um, just never came up. In the competition law proceeding before the European Commission, we have um, noted or we have suggested that a possible remedy might even be to the whole competitive competition problem to implement an advanced um, machine readable rights language that would allow publishers to defend themselves against search engines. So far, the search engine like Google has not really taken that idea up and has not uh, answered there. They suggested rather basically to amend slightly the existing robots exclusion protocol. For instance, they suggested to implement uh, the robot non-content um, attitude um, attribute um, Robert no class attribute and that was basically copied from Yahoo basically f amending slight making slight changes but they are not ready to even discuss major technological changes so it hasn't come up yet we have noticed that schema.org obviously has taken up a few of those ideas and that's also what Google said you know that the um, apparently the main requirements or suggestions of um, IPTC have been implemented through schema.org um, but when it comes to those particular aspects that uh, the publishers would be keen on uh, they will have said that technological not uh, possible. Uh, just um, um, Evan Sandhouse um, the New York Times, um, and I worked with um, Andreas and Stewart on the crafting of the R News protocol, and also um, worked with Google to get it integrated into Schema.org. And one of the things that did happen in that process, two of the uh, one of the things we got the search engines to agree to include in the standard was copyright co copyright holder 
in copyright year. So you are you can in a machine readable way now um, that is respected by the search engine say the copyright holder for this web page is this entity and it was copyrighted in this year. Um, there are things that aren't in there that we would we, we would have liked to see to be sure. But would you? Um, first for Thomas, but also for the rest of the panel, see that as an encouraging sign? Or do you think that it's not nearly enough? Or both? <laughs> first of all, I think it's encouraging, and it shows that from a technical point of view, it's all possible. You know, I don't, th I don't believe that for a second that there would be a big problem in implementing those alternative <laughs> solutions. And schema.org works, so you can actually see that the technology would work. But I think when it comes to the core that basically press publishers want to express different rights for different parts of their content or even of a whole web page, uh, we have not seen strong will to negotiate there. And plus you should also see there's not just Google out there. You know, there are many other aggregators and they will not use schema.org. They will just read what they want to read and ignore what they want to ignore. So it would only be a, a solution maybe with Google, but, uh, you know, who knows who comes around the corner next year and there are already so many aggregators out there that will basically just not care about those metadata and to address that, we we need uh, uh, some standardization beyond those individual solutions. Yeah, look, I think um, any any move forward to to make an effort to um, include the copyright is is a good thing. But um, I also think, uh, as Thomas said earlier, you know, Google is very good at um, pretending it's protecting the rights of the, the user and hiding behind that. And I think a lot of other organizations do that as well. Um, so while it's good to see somebody doing something, it's not nearly enough. And I, I don't think that we can let them off the hook by saying, okay, well, it's great, there's a bit of a move forward. I think this has to be pushed very hard because it's a complicated process. And the, the easiest thing to do is just lose the metadata. Problem solved. Like I, I don't know whose photograph that is. I don't know what the usage rights are, but nobody else knows either, so it's not a problem. I think that's the that's the real concern. Just a, a quick comment. I, I want to support what John said about attribution and how the simple addition of uh, a tagline or, or identifying information with a photo would go so far. Uh, in, in eliminating a lot of the problems. And, and I guess my, my pet peeve are the credit lines that simply attribute an image to a distribution agency without any attribution to the rights holder or person who created it and, and why those lines can't simply be the, the, the agency slash, uh, you know, John McHugh, uh, rather than just giving the agency's name, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, it, it it all goes back to that. Uh, I guess acknowledging that uh, uh, rights holders need to make a living, also. Okay, I should be careful what I say here because uh, the Economist wrote a, a very nice review about Markster recently, so I don't want to bash them too much. Um, but the Economist is also very well known for not bylining their stories, and uh, and the the answer is always, well, you know, a team of people worked on this, and so, you know, we have to acknowledge that it's a whole team. Um, and I think one of the problems, I've struggled with this for years, but one of the problems with the newspapers is that, you know, it's all run by writers, and uh, there are very few photographers at the top, and so lots of the stories are done by teams, and, and there's, a, there's a, you know, a belief that, that a lot of it can work that way. You don't, you don't attribute everything. Um, but I photographed the editor of The Economist uh, several years ago. I sat in on a, an interview, and, uh, and the reporter asked a bunch of questions. And then uh, when things quieted down, I jumped in and said, hey, do you mind if I ask a question? Obviously, both of them were horrified because photographers can't talk or write. Um, and I said, hey, can you tell me, how can you never attribute your, uh, or byline your photographs? And so at the start, the answer started, well, you know, as blah, 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 team produces, like, no, 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 hang on a second, check it out. One person pressed that button. 
one guy or girl took that photograph. So you can you can you know do your teamwork on the on the pictures, but or on the stories. But the photograph was made by one person. So I agree with you. This idea that the attribution goes to the agency all the time is is very frustrating and it's wrong. One person made that photograph, and they should be acknowledged as the creator. Sorry about the feedback. My only other comment from my very local view, I'm a resident in Austria, a small country in, in Europe, uh, but the, uh, the law there is, uh, is the typical Central European creator law, so not the copyright law, but the creator law, and uh, by law, every displayed content must be attributed to the creator. So by law, you, you cannot hide. So if you do not uh, note the creator next to a photo, you do an infringement to this creator law. And uh, I guess it's quite similar in Germany. Yeah? It's the same. yeah, it's the same in Germany. So may I point to this? So it's not only the ugly guys in the editorial staffs or in the layout departments, it's also the law which does not support that the creator is named. And it, maybe it should not only be a moral right, but a written down right. For me, it's really easy. You just call Getty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the idea is that, you know, people who are, you know, John Smith, I would recommend John Smith puts more than John Smith on his uh, photograph. Um, and then either, you know, it's his decision. He either sells through his own website or he names um, an agency that represents him. You know, there's any, I mean, there's any number of ways to do this. Also, bear in mind that there are a lot of people who don't necessarily want to sell the photographs. They just want to be acknowledged. And if it's a picture of, you know, my little girl on a swing in the playground and I put it on Facebook, you know, I don't think Google are going to steal that and use it in a big advertising campaign. I just want it to be identified, and lots of people want that. Um, but the, the selling part, you know, maybe further down the line, Mark still will do something on that. Question to everybody. Um, what, what do you think the future is of the user going online, hovering above your image, and the the data um, appearing um, on the hover, which then allows them to click through to your own site. I mean, I I believe that the technology is um, possible. So I need people who understand that kind of thing to tell me where it is. Okay, I'm going to try and stop standing up all the time. Um, we've looked at well, we myself and my business partner. There's, there's, there's two of us who do this. Um, we've looked at all sorts of technologies to try and make this work. Um, and in the end, what we've gone for is something quite simple. There are some very complicated, brilliant pieces of software out there, but they cost money. And nobody wants to spend any money. So we, ha you know, we have to be practical about what we can do. And the, you know, the idea that you know, yeah, somebody could go hover over the photograph and the information were there would be great. But that's, at the moment, the way that works is it's embedded in the, in the website, not in the photograph. So as soon as the photograph is gone from that website, the, 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 the software that provides that information is, uh, is gone as well. Um, and, you know, and it doesn't work if people right click and they download it or if they take just a, a screen grab of the whole image. I mean, you know, I use a, a website called Photo Shelter to use as my, my website, my, my archive and my sort of online display. And they have a very clever system so people can't download my, my pictures, they can't right click. But I didn't find out people were just doing screen grabs of the whole thing and then cropping the picture. And it's like so now not only are they stealing my pictures, but they're making them look like junk as well. Um, it's you know it's a it, you know it, it's a problem that's not solved yet, and we're going. This is going to go on for a long time. Um, I, I, I don't know if that answers your question exactly, but. Uh, so, so, um, I've, I've just been saying, look at Stipple, which is, is along those lines. Can I have that card as well, please? <laughs> Hello, uh, Phil Archer from the uh, W3C. Um, the technologies you're asking for exist. Um, some of them are a piece of cake. Um, that isn't the problem. The problem is the person at the end, whether they want to know. Your suggestion, madam, for something in the browser, great. Why the heck should Google put it in Chrome? Why the heck should, it, should Microsoft put it in Internet Explorer? Um, Thomas's points about the expression language, yeah. And I'm surprised Google were as polite as they were. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's not surprising. So the problem is not the technology. The problem is providing a reason for the person at the other end to want to implement what you want them to do. And that's what seems to be missing. 
Anybody want to respond to that? Okay, great. Well, I'd like to once again thank uh, my panelists uh, for such diverse um, and interesting talks. Thank you. And thank you.